なんで俺が死刑なんだって思ってるよお前のせいだ生き様で後悔はしたくないおお、OK、some flashbacks for UG 将来人を殺したらどうする contemplating his role here、yeah. Yeah, contemplating a proper death. I mean, all of the, the value of life after all of these lies that have been lost through Sukuna in his, by proxy, his body. Oh, right and wrong. Oh, and then it's OP, okay. Yeah, it, it's just <laughs> everything on his mind, life and death. Bringing up the I want to die surrounded by people I love, it does make me think about maybe towards the end of the show, will Yuji get out alive? Will he die? Will he die surrounded by people he loves? Or will he live surrounded by people his love, he loves? Because he's. You know, found a lot of people along the way, but how many will survive to that point as well? Waiting for that, um, yeah, Todo to come along and for the fight with Mahito. Also, be sure to check out the Patreon page where you can find next week's episode right now, a full length version of this, and some polls to vote for us next. Okay, back at a beach. Dagon's domain again? Huh. Obviously without the burn, so this is just his mental state. It doesn't look like it would be a <laughs> prequel to what we've seen happening. Or he's envisioning a future where he's walking along a beach. Oh. But the darkness through that door, yeah. Oh, but Yuji will be here to see him? That looked like the same hallway. Oh! He's just been chilling here, bored? Is Mahito even going to react? Maybe not. I mean, that eye is completely fucked, isn't it? If he does survive this. Mm. Okay, maybe that's why. <laughs> he wants to go to Malaysia, okay. Yeah, maybe that's why Mihito wasn't bothered because he's got all these transfigured humans here defending. What happened to Maki? She was burnt up bad too. It happened so quick, it was like so too quick to even contemplate and think about the consequences because so much more happened that episode. Difficult to even register. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, his actions mirroring him being like euphoric in the beach. Oh, starting to go. I mean, how much pain can you endure? Like, just the burns themselves, when they've been hit on the burns? I'm surprised he can even move at this point. Oh, yeah, he's going to run into it. He's, he's slicing through them like they're, like, like they're nothing, though. Like they're butter. Oh. Oh, no. I thought he was talking about Yuji. Oh. So you just, he's just going to catch the last moment.
I don't know, reveal yourself or not. Hi, Bara. Oh, talking about Haibara or talking to him. Kind of sketchy around the edges, though, isn't he? Yeah. What? Nanami. Is he going to have to fight Nanami as a transfigured human? Itadori kun. Okay, he's got something for him. Something to say. Ato wa tanomimasu. Oh, okay, no, he just obliterate. I mean, I don't think he was going to last much longer and go anywhere. I thought he might have just collapsed from the pain. Kept his legs. Oh, wow. Just the top half. Damn. That, oh my God. That is brutal. Yeah. He's just reveling in the chaos. Ooh. I feel like I've heard this theme before. Uh, yeah, it's the Lem being lives as well. Ooh. Yeah, he's like ready to catch it. <laughs> Reveling in the chaos. Damn, to shatter the pillar as well. The force of it. Mm. It's quite bad actually. Cut on his face. Yeah, that was supposed to be Junpai. You are me. I thought he was going to say it's fun. Oh. So he's going to control his rage. Oh, music's feeling hopeful though. God, <laughs> he's just using this like blob of flesh yeah, to control the battlefield. Hmm, the purple energy. Oh, that looks so sick, yeah. Ooh. What did he do? Jump over or jump down? Oh, it kind of had to make out. Do, 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 do. Uh, just in this short, tiny amount of space, yeah. Still one up to him. Okay, yeah, we'll just break through. Yeah, still breaking through. Oh, he's just moving at the same speed of those. I was thinking, why are they going slow mo? He's got so many different powers. Those guys, like, they could be like little bombs. Haha. <laughs> Use your environment to your advantage, yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, he's so like flexible, yeah. Just with his neck around the punch. Yeah, there's just the toying with him going in for a kiss. Being able to avoid, wow. Yeah, make a hole in himself so it avoids the punch, damn. Yeah, he's definitely grown and changed as well. Could that even be him? Transformed. Yeah, totally is. But like, yeah, you can see he's choosing to toy with him at certain points because he went for a fist there instead of a blade that could have just like, you know, killed him right away. Oh, was he? 
Okay, he's just using... Yeah, they were just transfigured humans. I was like, was he using the body? Oh, something else in play. His humanity, partially. Okay. Has... Has there been two of him this whole time, then? Does that affect his strength at all? If he's own there's only two. Like, yeah, his power's been split in half? I don't know if that... I mean, it means that if Yuji kills him here and thinks he's killed him here, the other one's still alive. Or are they at, like, half mental capacity? Oh. Okay. This is where the other one is. Mm. Yeah, come on, Nobara. <laughs> okay, she's got a bit of info on him. No, nah, that's on purpose. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's going in for some close combat as well. That did well, but physical attacks just don't really work on him at all, do they? So, are these fights happening simultaneously? Okay, so that was Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 18. We start off with Nanami in this kind of weird, like, lucid state where he is imagining himself on holiday in Malaysia while he is fighting... Um, it was really cool seeing like how he was just like, you know, reveling in the sun and that was mirroring him doing his attacks in the real world. It was cool, but also quite tragic, of course. You had the music. I could feel myself welling up a bit there, but it kind of got short by Mojito actually showing up. Um, and I wasn't sure if Mojito was even going to do anything because the state Nanami's in, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't have taken much to to put the final nail in the coffin he was already so burnt up you know this probably was putting him out of his pain putting him out of his misery a little bit but it was just so brutal you had the hat you know i thought he'd just like blown him up but then you see his legs are still there and one of his the arm that he uses to hold his cleaver is just laying there on the floor which makes it even more brutal and gross and of course Mihito just reveling in everything. What would you expect at this point? And it was cool seeing um, Haibara come up again, even though, you know, we, we didn't see much of Haibara in the first half of this season. Um, he only had a few minutes of screen time, really. His impact you can see throughout, especially, obviously, his impact on Nanami here. And then we had the passing of the torch, Nanami saying, you know, it's your turn. You take it from here, Yuji. You finish the job. And yeah, Yuji, he wasn't as rage filled as you might expect. It, it does harbor that rage, but he knows that um, he he's not going to defeat him just by rage. He needs to like control it and use that to his advantage to maybe pump up his curse energy a bit. And it was odd, um, Mihito saying, like, you are me. You know, that, that happens a lot where um, villains mirror the heroes. But what exactly did Mihito mean by that? How do they mirror each other? I don't know. I'm not sure I see, like, a really clear, like, dichotomy there. Something that connects them both. Apart from, like, you know, um, Mihito mirroring Yuji's, like, curse energy. When they both had their fists, in a way. To go along with Mihito's power, you have some great animation. Just the fluidness and all the creative things you can do with it. The way he's dodging attacks by, like, splitting open and there being, like, a hole in his chest where the fist has gone through, so he's completely avoided it. That's really cool. I think maybe it is just because Yuji and him have interacted so much and they both can and can't hurt each other, vice versa. Because th their plan here was Operation Kill Itadori, but how exactly did they plan to do that? Have um, Sukuna a new vessel? Have Sukuna just pilot around his dead body, which would 
eventually decay i guess i don't think you can pilot a dead body anyway so unless um they can like mentally kill him or do something where he's like in a sunken place again and sukuna is just in full control 24 7 still using that body but yeah with the animation i do think in this episode and the previous one i did have a little bit of a problem with legibility um with just like actually fully understanding everything that's going on this is a small criticism but you know i want to talk about some of the negatives as well i don't want to be all praised 24 7 they just felt like this disconnect with exactly what was happening like there's this moment in the elevator where Yuji's in the elevator fighting and then suddenly he's outside the elevator we don't see that transition to outside the elevator and that it just there's just like this little bit of disconnect especially with him going into the elevator and then him coming out of the elevator that bit especially I was just like oh okay we're in an elevator now and it happened a little bit as well where they were in that super narrow space with the um, transfigured human, you know, narrowing the corridor. It was cool as it was narrowing, but when they were actually fighting in that bit, it was a bit hard to follow. I was thinking it would have been super cool if we got like a cross section there and we had like one of the walls just be invisible. So we're seeing them both like, you know, stuck against that, like a, almost like a plane of glass from our perspective as they're fighting. That would have been a cool perspective to have shown of that fight. And I, I, yeah, I had a little bit of the same issue last episode with the Maharaga and Sukuna fight where it did sometimes felt like, oh, suddenly they're here, suddenly they're there. I know it's a fast paced fight, obviously, but I felt like there could have been just a little bit more of that connective tissue to show exactly where they are. I think a fight that does that really well and ironically has a teleporter in that fight is the season two episode 11 fight in Mob Psycho 100. The one that's called like everyone versus Shimazaki where they have like loads of crazy stuff happening but it just feels like you can follow it there's, there's like a really good flow to it that's just like one tiny little niggling criticism in this wave of amazingness we've had from this season you know <laughs> but it's something i wanted to mention at least and then with mojito splitting himself i do wonder there must be some sort of consequence to that either like cognitive cognitively he isn't as like aware because it's so overpowered if he can split himself and there'd be no negative because at that point why not just have a million of you and just overpower everyone there must be something with his body mass being halved so he's lighter and um he's like transfiguring himself to fill out that volume more um so he's got less power but he doesn't seem underpowered here or yeah as i said there's something co cognitively but even then i don't feel like there is but i feel like if these two pieces were to come together and like rejoin it would be like oh he's powered up that's what that felt like if that moment happened that's what that would feel like so there must be some consequence of him not being connected here because if there's not it's just again so overpowered and like why wouldn't you just always have a version of yourself you know back home chilling where you can never die or maybe it's like you split yourself and one half can die and that means once that one half does die you are half as powerful you only have what's remaining so that's why that wouldn't be a like valid uh, way to use that power then there must be something there at least and then yeah at the end he's the other half is up against nobara um, I am a bit worried for her, worried for her eyesight at least, because in the OP, as I've said a few times, she's doing this and, you know, I know from other anime in the openings, if a character is like covering their eyes or like they've got whited out eyes or there's a big focus on eyes, there can be something there. And she's like specifically covering one eye. So it feels like she might lose an eye or there's something to do with vision that is lost maybe even metaphorically on a grander level. But if it is specifically to do with her, I feel like, you know, she would look quite cool with an eye patch in the future. So that could be, you know, her in this fight. And that's a consequence of this fight because we haven't s seen much of her 
like as she said uh, she doesn't feel like she's contributed much here so she wants to get in on the action too even though you know does she still have some problems in her head nanami told her to stay put um cognitively is she recovered enough all there from her her being knocked out before and i did like how um, you know, a few episodes ago when we got that, how realistic that was. Because in some shows, you know, people get knocked out and it's a device used to just give us a time skip where there it was like, she's knocked out and you see the actual consequences of what that would be like in real life. Because you don't just get knocked out and then wake up and you're perfectly fine and you've just been like time skipped five minutes. No, it does proper damage to you. It can really mess you up permanently sometimes. And then back to the very, very start of the episode, of course, we're seeing Yuji just contemplating his role in everything in Jiu-Jitsu society, his role in society, how he values life, um, dealing with the fact that Sukuna is using his body to commit all of these atrocious acts to cause all of this death, how he maybe wants to counteract that by you know, bringing good, using his body for good. And like going back right to the start of Grandad saying, hey, um, you know, when you die, make sure you're surrounded by people you love because, you know, it was grand of dying alone. And yeah, as I said, it's making me think towards the end of the series, what is Yuji's fate at the end? Will he make it out of this alive? Because it could be the case where he's not just dying surrounded by people he loves, but living surrounded by people he loves. That could be a really positive twist on that. Or they could go really dark and I know... You know, the show's got a bit of a reputa reputation to be quite brutal of him maybe, yeah, actually dying alone or, you know, that coming up some way if he does die in the show. Who knows if he actually will. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, be sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts down below. And if you really loved it, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on future uploads. So yeah, I'll catch you guys later.